In our first installment of Water Cooling for Beginners, we took an in-depth look at all the parts that you'll need to get started on your water cooling journey. Now that you have basically everything sitting on the desk in front of you, how do you plan your loop out? Does loop order matter? Should you go hard or soft tubing? Let's dive in. I originally planned to dedicate an entire video to hard versus soft tubing, but I think it's best to incorporate that portion of the program into this loop planning video because you can't very well have one without the other. But before we get into that discussion, let's rewind a bit and figure out how we're going to run our loop. The first thing that we need to make sure of is that we have enough cooling capacity for the parts we want to put underwater. A very basic rule of thumb that I follow is that you'll need 120 millimeters of radiator for each component that you're cooling, plus another 120 millimeters on top of that. So if you have a Ryzen 720 700X and a GTX 1080, that would be 120 plus 120 plus 120 for a total of 360 millimeters of radiator space. Things get a little more complicated when you get into HEDT parts like Skylake X or Threadripper, or if you're dealing with abnormally power hungry GPUs like Vega cards. In that case, I'd probably bump things up a bit to make sure that you're getting adequate thermal dissipation. In Project Baron, I used a 16 core Threadripper 1950X plus two Vega 64, and my setup of twin 480 millimeter radiators kept my GPUs under 45C at load and my processor around 50C. Keep in mind everything was overclocked to the max as well. Is this overkill? Yeah, but probably not as much as you might think. The goal here is to look good surely, but what we want to achieve is lower temperatures than you can get with an AIO, or else is it really worth it? You wanna make sure that your several hundred dollar and likely many labor hour investment pays off. And if you have the bare minimum of radiator space and your 8700K is thermal throttling at load, did you really do it right? It's better to err on the side of more rads if you have the option and space. There is some misinformation out there about loop order and how putting a radiator before or after a heat generating component can significantly impact your cooling capacity. And I guess when you think about it, that does make a little bit of sense. After all, if you have a loop where you're cooling both a CPU and a GPU, and you have the loop running such that it goes from the output of the CPU into the GPU, the logic kind of dictates that coolant would pick up heat from the CPU and take it right down to the GPU. But as it turns out, physics and thermodynamics trump logic every time, and loop order really doesn't matter at all. For more information, I'd encourage you guys to go check out Jay's video linked down below, where he does actual extensive testing on the subject. What is really happening inside your loop is that the coolant is normalizing and reaching a temperature equilibrium across all components. And you end up with a simple math equation of heat introduced by the CPU and or GPU versus heat dissipated by the radiators. This is important information to keep in mind as when you're sitting here for hours staring at your system, trying to figure out how you wanna run your tubes. If you think that you absolutely need to go from the CPU block back to the radiator or else things won't cool as well, you're going to limit your options for good aesthetic and functional design. What matters more is that your tubes are running unobstructed and not touching anything in your system that can generate heat. It's okay if they rub up against your PCIe cables, but don't have them draped against your GPU backplate. Now that process of sitting and staring is likely familiar to anyone who has built a custom loop before. When I'm designing a new system, I often will install my motherboard, my graphics card, my radiator and pump, and then kind of let everything marinate in my brain for a day or more. I do sketches, I mock up tubing runs using scrap I have lying around, and I often take photos from different angles to let me better see how fittings are going to line up and what bends I might need to make. Let's first think about a soft tubing loop in our system here. We don't have anything overly tricky to navigate, and soft tubing does give you the flexibility, 
literally, to link components that don't necessarily line up perfectly. Whereas with hard tubing, you'll need to make use of another bend or, or another fitting, and soft tubing just kind of flexes right into that spot with no issues instead of you having to actually make this bend. There's also less to worry about when it comes to fittings and achieving a proper seal, as compression fittings like these make things really simple. Unscrew the fitting, slide the collar onto the tube, insert the barb into the tube, slide the collar down, and screw it into place. The seal is achieved between the tubing and the barb itself, and the compression of the collar ensures that the tube isn't going anywhere. I will say that you wanna make sure the tube is entering the fitting as close to perpendicular as possible as you can, because if you have the tube slid onto the barb at a skewed angle, it makes it much easier for the tube to pop off when the system is pressurized. So let's see if we could get a soft tubing run set up in our system here, and then we'll take a look at it. So here's our finished soft tubing loop. It looks pretty good, right? This kind of loop takes far less time and requires far less precision to execute properly. It's also easier to maintain as if you need to swap out your CPU, for instance, you don't even necessarily need to drain the loop. You could just detach the block and swing the tubing out as you would in AIO. Of course, be careful while doing so and be gentle. These things can definitely leak but the benefits of soft tubing are real. Ever had a hard tube running over your dim slots and wanna upgrade your memory? Well, now a two minute process of opening your side panel window and popping in two more RAM sticks has turned into a multi-hour affair where you have to drain the entire loop, disassemble all the tubing, install the memory, reattach everything, make sure the seals are right, and then refill it. Soft tube, just, Push it out of the way. Pretty simple, right? But hard tubes clearly offer more aesthetic value than soft tubes do. And that's why you see all the builds on the show floor of Computex using PETG or acrylic hard tubing instead of this floppy stuff. Next video, we'll get into how to bend this. So don't worry about that for now. Let's just examine how we have to plan our loop when we're going to be using hard tubing instead of soft. As I said earlier, small angles and misalignments with soft tube are no big deal. You just put a little curve into the line and you're good to go. But with hard tube, you have to take all of these issues into account as you're planning your runs. Can you make a bend go from here to here or is that beyond your skill or comfort level? Can you implement a fitting instead? I take huge advantage of things like 45 and 90 degree fittings when building hard tube systems, especially when exiting CPU blocks and pumps. Often you wanna to try to establish a long, straight run if you can, unless you're specifically going for something funky. This right here is a perfect example as I utilize two 90 degree adapters to position a direct vertical run from the pump up to the radiator. And that's where this piece of tubing came in. It makes sure that the ports are perfectly aligned and makes the simple task of making one 90 degree bend in the tube instead of having to do something convoluted. You also wanna to try to avoid bends that aren't 90 degrees if you're first starting out. If you've never bent two before, making one clean, precise 90 degree bend is difficult enough without having to worry about making a 57.3 degree bend as well. Try to establish clear pathways for your tubing free of obstacles or obstructions. For instance, say for some reason you have decided that you need to run from your CPU block back to your pump and you wanna do it by going down and over. Well, now you have to worry about going around your GPU and getting that out of the way as well as correct for any height discrepancies that might exist between your components. When you're mating two loop parts via hard tube, you need to consider that they need to align along all three axes, X, Y, and Z. That means you need to line them up side to side, top to bottom, and front to back. If any of these is off, you'll need to redo your tube. 
The more complicated you make your bends, the more likely you are to make even a tiny, tiny mistake that throws the whole thing out of alignment. When you're first starting out, think simple. Look at the system from the front, look at it from the side, even look at it from the back. See where your fittings are lining up and where they aren't. And as I mentioned above, keep in mind that we need to look at all three dimensions here, not just two. So now that we're pretty sure we have our loop configured the way we want it to be, we have the correct cooling capacity and we have our layout set up and looking pretty, at least in our heads, we need to bend these tubes. In part three, we'll tackle how to measure, bend, and install hard tubes the right way, and what the most common errors are while doing so. So get subscribed so that you don't miss the next installment of Water Cooling for Beginners. And if you wanna join our growing Discord community, make sure you check out my Patreon, link down below, or consider supporting BPS Customs by buying one of these t-shirts. Thanks everybody for watching. I hope you found this video a little bit informative, and I'll see you next time.